Okay, suppose someone gives you an equation and you want to get this sort of visual image of what it looks like and sort of, you know, how does it behave and what does it look like and what's the relationship between these unknown variables. Okay, so graphing is a really powerful way of doing that. But the question is, how do you graph one of these algebraic expressions if you're given it to you? So the answer is, well, you have a sense out of what some of these things look like. For example, you know, a vague idea of what something looks like if it's a line or if it's going to be a parabola, if there's like a square kind of term in there and so forth. Another way, once you have a vague sense of what the general shape is, the one way to get it sort of solidified in your mind is to look for where that curve is going to cross the axes. And so these are called x-intercepts and y-intercepts. OK, so what's an x-intercept? An x-intercept, take a look at this graph. Here's a, a curve in the plane. And the x-intercepts, those are places where the curve crosses the x-axis. So for example, we'd have two x-intercepts, one right here and one right here. So these are x-intercepts because, in fact, this is where the curve crosses the x-axis. A y-intercept is where the curve crosses the y-axis. For an example, it's right here. One little point of fact is that, um, well, there could be many, many intercepts, not just two here, one here, and so forth. So you have to be careful. Now, how would you find, how would you find these intercepts if you wanted to? Well, you see, one way to find the intercepts is to think what it means. So for example, what does a y-intercept mean? Well, that's where the curve crosses the y-axis. OK? So what would happen there? Well, the y-axis is where all the x values are 0. So in fact, to find the y-intercept, what you would do is you would let x equals 0 and see what the y value equals. So to find the y-intercept, we let x be 0. How would you find the x-intercepts? Well, notice the x-intercepts happen at a location where y is 0. Because in fact, this is along the x-axis, and all these points have the property that y has a value of 0. Because here's a value of y equals 1, y equals 2, 3, y equals minus 1. This is where y equals 0. So if we find out for what values of x does y equal 0, that will actually locate these points. Let me try to actually show you this in practice with uh, some specific examples. So, for example, let's graph, let's graph 2x plus 5y equals 12 by just finding the x-intercepts and y-intercepts and knowing whatever we know about this. Well, if you look at this, I see an x and a y, and they're both appearing to the first power. So in fact, my guess is this is going to be some kind of line, because we saw earlier that if you just have x and y to first powers, usually we get a line. In fact, this is a line in standard form. This is called standard form, where you have something x plus something y equals a number. OK, so uh, how would we graph this? Well, I'm going to try to first find the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. So let's find the x-intercepts first. x-intercepts. What do I do? Well, I want to find out. Uh, where this thing crosses the x-axis. And so what I have to do is let y equal 0. So let's let y equal 0. If I let y equal 0, that's going to lead to the x-intercepts. If I put 0 in for y, what do I see? I see 2x plus 0 equals 12. And so I see that x equals 6. So that's the x-intercept. So the, this graph, whatever it does, is going to cross the x-axis at a value of 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's going to cross right there. OK, what about the y-intercept? Well, to find the y-intercept, I do the related thing. I let x be 0. And if I let x be 0, then this term goes away. And I see 5y equals 12. And so I see that y equals 12 over 5. So 12 over 5, what is that? That's about 2 and 2 fifths. So in fact, if here are my axes again, maybe a little bit harder to see, where does it cross the y-axis? At y equals 12 over 5, which is about 2 and a little bit. So given those two facts and our intuition that, in fact, this is actually describing a line, we can actually sketch the graph of this. So let me put that information over here. So we have the x-intercept, it says, is at 6. The y-intercept is at y equals 12 fifths. And so what does the graph look like? Well, if I go over 6 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's say this is 6 right here. 
and then I go up uh, 12 fifths. So 12 fifths is what? We'll see. Here's 1, 2, 3. And 12 fifths is 2 and 2 fifths. So it's almost 2 and a half. It's right around here. So that is 12 fifths. And this is 6. And knowing it passes through those two points and it's a straight line, I can graph a very accurate picture of it. The graph would look like this, a straight line that goes through these two intercepts. So you can see I can get a really neat picture of it fast just by finding the intercepts. Let's try another example. Suppose I look at the equation y equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. So first, let me find the um, y-intercept. So to find the y-intercept, I let x be 0, because I want to see where it crosses the y-axis. If I let x be 0, then this term goes away and that term goes away, and it's really easy to see y is just 3. Pretty easy. So that is the y-intercept. Where does this curve cross the y the y axis? It's going to cross the y axis at 1 2 3 right there. That's where it's going to cross the y axis. Okay? And then what about the x axis? Where is it going to cross the x axis? So that's the x intercept. So to find the x intercept, what do I do? Well, I'm going to now let y be 0. I want to see where it crosses the x axis, so I set y equal to 0 and solve for x. Well, that's actually a little quadratic, isn't it? So that's going to require a little quadratic gymnastics here. Got a quadratic equation, and I hope this factors. I'll put an x and an x. This plus tells me that there's are both going to be the, the same sign, and they're both going to be minus. And how about 3 and 1? Minus 3x minus 1x is minus 4x. This looks great. So if I solve this, I see either x minus 3 equals 0, which means x equals 3 or x minus 1 equals 0, which means that x equals 1. So what I see is that there are two x-intercepts, not just one. One at 3 and one at 1. So there are two x-intercepts and one y-intercept. Now, if I look at this thing, I also remember that since I see a squared on the x, this is going to be some sort of parabola, some sort of curve that looks like this. And so now, how would that go? Well, given these intercepts, we should be able to sketch this pretty well. Because what do I know? I have an inter a y-intercept at 3. So I have, let's see, um, 1, 2, 3. So it's going to pass, it's gonna pass the, uh, through the, x, uh, the y-axis at 3. And what about the x-intercepts? There's two of them. One's at 3 and one's at 1. So we're going to have 1 at 1, 2, 3. So in fact, our graph goes through these points. Goes through the point here at the, at the y-axis at 3 and these two points on the x-axis. So since it's a parabola, I can sort of bend this curve, make it look sort of like a parabola-like shape thing. And that gives me a, an amazingly accurate sketch of the graph, just knowing those intercepts and knowing that roughly it should be a, a parabola like this. Gives me an amazing, an amazing, amazingly accurate sketch of this. Okay? Let's try one last one, just to really drive this home. And then I'll give you a chance to try some yourself. So let's look at the equation x equals minus y squared plus 4y plus 12. And I want to find the intercepts. So first, let's find the uh, x-intercept. What do you do for the x-intercept? If you want to find the x-intercept, you want to see where it hits the x-axis, we let y equal 0. We always let the opposite variable equal 0. So we let y equal 0. And that's going to be pretty easy, because if these all are 0, it's easy to see that x has to be 12. So that's pretty easy. So x equals 12. There's only one x-intercept, and it's at x equals 12. What about the y-intercepts now? Well, here I'm going to let x equal 0. And if I let x equal 0, then notice I have a quadratic equation in y, minus y squared 
plus 4y plus 12 equals 0. OK, so now let's see if this factors or not. So let's see, I'll put a minus y here. Now you might be tempted to write a minus y here, but actually that's not a good temptation because that would multiply to give me a plus y squared. So I just put a y here, and that product would be a minus y squared. By the way, if you are nervous about dealing with these negative in front of the y squared, why don't you just multiply everything through by negative 1? That way it'll be a positive here and you can factor like you're always used to doing. OK, I'm going to need uh, the same sign here. And what is that same sign going to be? Well, it looks like it may be positive, but it's hard to tell because of this thing here. So it's a little tricky, a little tricky. Let's see if we can figure this out now. So I want to put in two numbers here. They're going to multiply to give 12, but then combine to give, to give 4. So let's see. I think 6 and 2 are going to be good. Now how should I put them in, though? See, 6 and 2, I think I should put the 6 here and the 2 here. And then if I put a plus sign here and a plus sign here, I think I'm in good shape. Let's see. 6y and then minus 2y is a 4y. And this times this is 12. If you had a little trouble with that negative sign here and working about it, just multiply everything through by negative 1. That becomes a positive. And these become negative, and you can factor more directly. Anyway, these two things multiply to give 0. So either this equals 0, which means y is 6, or this equals 0, which means y is negative 2. So in fact, there are two y-intercepts. One is at negative 2 and one is at y equals 6. Now, I also see a square here, so I know this is going to be a parabola. Since it's a y squared, I know the parabola is going to open up either like this or like this. And let's see if we can figure out which way it's supposed to, supposed to go. So let's see. We have, uh, let's see, an x-intercept at 12. So at 12, let's put 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We'll put 12 right here. Suppose that's 12. So it crosses the x-axis at 12. What else do we see? We see that the y-intercepts are negative 2 and 6. So negative 2, 1, 2, is over here. And 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, would be up here. So in fact, this is a parabola somehow. It's supposed to open either like this or like this and pass through these points. So it seems like, in fact, the parabola probably is going to go like this. And look something. Of course, my axes are moving. Don't you hate it when your axes move? Looks something like that. So look how beautiful we can sort of estimate or guess what the picture of that function looks like just by finding the intercepts. OK, you try, some finding, you try these finding intercept type things and seeing if you can sketch roughly what a graph would look like. It's really important to be able to, again, get a visual for an algebraic type expression. Enjoy.